Hey everyone, my name is Gamer Cory, and welcome back to another Red Dead Online video. Now in today's video, we are going to be going over three different things. The first one being where you guys can go ahead and find Madame Nazar for today. The next one being all of the different collection sets and their cycles. And then last but not least, we're going to go over all of the daily challenges in extensive detail so that you guys can make as much gold as possible here in Red Dead Online. So let's go ahead and just break it down and get right into it right now for you guys. So the first location is going to be Madame Nazar's location, and she is going to be on the Dakota River right here and the quickest fast travel location will actually be in valentine so just make your way a little bit south and you should be able to find her right away but this is her location for today hopefully uh you can find her right away um if this is the only thing that you guys actually came here for today then don't forget to like comment and subscribe down below it would help me out a lot and is greatly appreciated and also a thumbs up does mean a lot to me because if it helped you out it could help somebody else and it does mean a lot and it shows a lot of support uh, to the channel as well um let's go over a little bit about the live stream i do live stream every monday wednesday and friday those times are actually indicated on my website which is gamerquarry.com um if you guys want to know about my other live stream days uh my main days are the monday wednesdays and fridays i do live stream on other days and if you guys want to be able to participate with that make sure you guys are subscribed with bell notifications turned on or making sure that you guys are checking out GamerCory.com or follow me over on Twitter. So let's go ahead and talk a little bit about the different collection sets and the cycles. Now these are a great way of making a ton of money here in Red Dead Online and if, it, if anybody knows the thing or two about making actually some money I think that would actually be me with over $125,000 as of right now and pretty much everything purchased here in Red Dead Online that I possibly could want or need. Um, but I like to go after the coins or the lost jewelry just because you do make the most amount of money as possible however you do need the field shovel and also the metal detector in order to collect all of those sets for in the lost jewelry just one of the coins but you can make about 540 dollars per hour with both of those sets now the coins are going to be a part of cycle number four and the lost jewelry will be a part of cycle number three for today now if you're not a collector or a very low rank collector or just need something to collect because you just don't have enough money because you don't have the field shovel or the metal detector or maybe you just have already done the lost jewelry and the coins and need something else to do these next sets are going to be for you uh we have american wildflowers at cycle number one we have tarot cards at cycle number three bird eggs at cycle number five and arrow uh i'm sorry and antique alcohol bottles at cycle number six now those are great if you guys are lower rank like I was mentioning before or not even a collector at all. You can actually collect all of those collection sets, those four that I just got done mentioning. And you can actually carry 10 at a time before you actually have to sell them. At that point you're not going to be able to pick up any more. Then you're going to want to become a collector, sell those all off to Madame Bazaar and then make a killing uh, on each of those sets. You'll make actually quite a bit of money if you do that. You'll probably have enough money to purchase the field shovel and the metal detector pretty much straight away. The last two sets are going to be the arrowheads and the family heirlooms both of those you do need to be a collector we have uh, arrowheads at cycle number one and the family heirlooms at cycle number four if you guys do have any further questions regarding the cycles and the collection sets then please leave a comment down below so that i can do my best to uh help you guys out the best that way that i possibly can all right so the next thing that we're actually going to go over is all of the daily challenges and the daily challenges are pretty much in my opinion the best way of making gold here in red dead online and you can make 11 gold bars each and every single day there's a couple different requirements and in, in order to do that number one you do have to be at a daily streak of 21 days or more in order to do that you can see at the bottom left hand corner of the screen i'm at 154 days uh you also do need to have all of the different roles that are available in red dead online and be at least a rank 10 in each of those roles so like i said a couple different requirements that are needed and then you're going to have access to the those 19 you can get five gold bars from the daily general challenges and you can get six gold bars from the daily role challenges you only need to complete one daily challenge to continue the streak and there's always one daily challenge that's super simple to complete that you can actually get it completed in a quicker time frame that it actually takes you to log into Red Dead Online. So you're going to want to complete that one as quick as you possibly can. If you don't have a lot of time to put into Red Dead Online. And I understand that if you're more, uh, you know, maybe you're just not really into the game. Or maybe you just want to make sure that your streak is continuing. 
this is going to be kind of for you guys. You can actually earn more than 11 gold bars per day by doing the daily challenges because showdowns, horse races, uh, stranger danger missions, free rooms events, those all count as extra gold in your pocket even if you complete the daily challenges. So let's go ahead and start with them, and we're going to find out which ones uh, are very, very simple for today. Wow, there's... Wow, the first three are kind of interesting. Provisions at a campfire, wildflowers picked, and couture springs. I would probably say that the provisions, the uh, vanilla flowers, and visit couture springs are going to be the easiest one. Couture springs is way up north by the Indian reservation, so that would be your quickest fast travel location. You'd come in here and then basically head down this road. And then once you get about in this general area, you'll actually hit it. Just be kind of keep in mind that there are wolves in this general area right here. So if you guys go up there and come down from the inner reservation, just be cautious. Or even going back if you're going to use that fast travel location on the way back too. Uh, the next one is vanilla flowers. There's a whole bunch basically right around where I am at. I'm going to try to give you guys a couple different spots. There's actually a tree over here that you guys can actually get once I'm on. Uh, there's a couple that are over along the train tracks over here. Uh, I think it's like about here. I think there's another one that's, that's actually about like here. Um, I think there's actually another one over here somewhere. Uh, if you go up by this house right here, you can actually find usually one like right next to it. I know there's a couple up in like this general area. And then there's a whole bunch in the Bayou NWA, which is all this is kind of part of it anyway. But you can actually find like a couple along this road right here. And then if you go into this area all right in here, you'll find a ton of them. There's a couple off the road just right around here. And then once you start going a little bit more inland, you should be um, good with it. You're not going to really see a lot of other herbs, especially when you get into this area because it's kind of, well, it's kind of swampy in this entire area. But it's, there's a lot more water than... In some of the other areas you'll find like evergreen huckleberries and other herbs in this area but just look for the ones that are specifically on the trees and those are the vanilla wildflowers so hopefully those different spots do help you guys out and then what was the next one it was uh cook five provisions basically cook whatever you possibly can at any of the campfires there's two in san denis if you guys don't know where they're at there's one just outside and across the road tracks from the general store so pretty much right here there's one in northern San Denis up by the graveyard, which is in this area here. There's one in Rhodes. There's actually one just north of Rhodes as well. There's one right here. And then there's one in Southfield Flats. You can obviously go to your camp. You can go to the one that's in Valentine, which is over by the butcher right here. Um, you can go to the one in Blackwater behind the house there. And then north or south of uh, Tumbleweed, you can go to Solomon's Foley, which is down in this area which is a gang hideout. Any gang hideouts would work. Uh, you can even have some of the bootlegger missions have um, campfires. There's a lot of different places that you guys can go pick. Just pick one, go to it, cook five, anything that you want. Whatever, it doesn't, it doesn't really matter. Uh, two spoonbills skinned. Uh, the spoonbills are going to be best in the Blue Water Marsh area. So like in this area up here. Or if you come down into this area by the boot. I would say those are some of the better locations to find the spoonbills. You're going to want to do this more in the daytime hours. You'll find more. Every once in a while you can find them in the nighttime hours. But you'll find a lot more in abundance of them during the daytime hours. Especially in the areas that I just mentioned. Uh, let's see what else we got. I saw that there were showdown ones. So go on call. You can just actually go down here to quick join. And go to the story on call and it'll just put you into a random one that you've already completed uh with some random people that's pretty easy get play 10 player kills in showdown so if you're not really big i think this is i don't think i've ever had this one where you actually get 10 player kills in showdowns okay that's uh, that's good that there's a new one but if you're not really into pvp this one's not really going to be for you same thing with the free roam events you have to have three player kills with thrown weapons now depending on which free roam event you guys get into it could be a little bit harder dispatch rider and railroad baron are going to be probably the more complicated ones to do this one on but if you can get like cold dead hands or some of the other ones then it shouldn't be too difficult so it really is kind of just based on timing but that's all the daily general challenges that are kind of gone over now a lot of the daily rule challenges are pretty simple as well However, if you're not a rank 20, then they might be different for you. So if you guys have any questions regarding them, then please let me know. So what mine are might not be the same as yours or even related to what yours are. 
So we have two Moonshine, a preferred type, sold to a buyer. So basically selling it your Moonshine to anybody but Bert, and you have to do that twice. So you're going to have to spend a little bit of time doing that. You have to serve four Moonshine to other players at your bar. So either invite like another person in, get them drunk, or invite four people and serve them each one time, whatever. Uh, we have to have uh, Moonshine sold with five minutes remaining. So when you're selling it to a preferred buyer, you would sell it as quickly as you possibly can, making sure that you're not damaging the the uh, moonshine bottles or barrels then you should be good to go and then obviously making sure that your clock doesn't run down below that five minute mark but you'd have it two times the opportunity to do that it's because you do have to sell it twice to a preferred type if you're going to do that twice anyway the next one is the trader roll we have 15,830 distant delivery on a mission while in the wagon uh, this is going to be basically two distant deliveries not worth it in my opinion unless you're truly trying to just get that extra gold I would probably save this one till the very end. Just my opinion. Six large animal carcasses donated to Crips. So anything on the back of the horse would count for the most part. It has to be the full carcass, so it can't be like bear or alligators. Um, but cougars, panthers, deer, so pronghorns, uh, white-tailed deer, things like that are all going to count. Technically, foxes, coyotes should all count too, but for whatever reason, they're not because they are considered... They're supposed to be considered large because they go on the back of your horse. And then six perfect carcasses donated to Crips. So technically you could actually do this together if you only hunt for the the large and for the three star quality, then you should be fine with that. So these two definitely could go together if you really want to. Uh, the last, the next one is going to be the collector roll. You got five bird eggs found. Again, bird eggs are going to be a part of cycle number five. You have coins found, part of cycle number four. And then family heirlooms are also going to be a part of cycle number four. So you're just going to have to do a little bit of collecting. And if you're really trying to get a lot of money, then this is going to be good for you. Just focus on whatever your daily challenge roll for the collector roll. So if the if the sets are different for you, just, just focus on them. And then you're going to be just fine. And then last but not least, we have the bounty hunter roll, which is the only roll that actually pays out additionally in gold, which is pretty amazing. So like I said, you can earn a lot more than gold than 11 gold bars if you do all the daily challenges quite honestly you could probably make probably anywhere between 13 and 15 gold bars per day depending on how many showdown and bounty hunting missions that you guys do but we have to have two bounties brought in from new hanover so you're looking at valentine emerald ranch or van horn you can do those from you have to loot three of your bounty targets so just make sure that once you hog tie them you loot them before you bring them in and then last but not least, we have two bounty targets tagged with tracking arrows. So what you can do is do your new Hanover posters. You pull out your tracking arrows, which honestly, the pamphlet's super expensive. So if you don't have the money, don't buy it. And the only time that you're ever going to use your tracking arrows is for the daily challenges anyway. You can tag them with the tracking arrow and then go ahead and loot them after you've hogtied them. So these are fairly related today, so it shouldn't be too terribly bad, but the tracking arrow pamphlet... Like I said, that's very, very expensive. Um, if you're running low on money, honestly, I would focus on the collector roll. It's, I've made literally so much money. I've made, I wish it would tell me, but I bet it's over a hundred thousand dollars on just, just the collector roll alone, to be completely honest with you. Um, cause before the update actually came for the frontier pursuits, I did not have all of my ability cards maxed out. And I didn't start working on those until I started making a ton of money with the collector roll. And you can make over $4,000 each and every single day. So it's pretty pretty simple. You'll probably have to put anywhere between 5 and 8 hours roughly depending on how quick you are. And kind of what direction you kind of go with the collector roll. It really honestly just depends. But it's up to you. But if you guys have any questions regarding any of the daily challenges, then please let me know. If you guys have any questions regarding Red Dead Online, please let me know as well. Because I'm definitely here to help you guys out the best that I possibly can. But if you guys did enjoy the video or found it helpful in any way, then don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe down below. It would help me out a lot and is greatly appreciated. And also make sure you guys tell all your friends, family members, your dogs, cats, birds, hamsters, gerbils, whatever, everybody about me, I would definitely appreciate it. But until next time, YouTube, you guys keep doing what you're doing because you're already doing it. And you guys, stay gaming.